Hello. Hello. Uh, my name is Adam Smith from Nobel Prize. Yes. yes. Many congratulations on the award of the Nobel Prize. <coughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> it must be... Um, it must be a, an amazing um, environment. It's an amazing moment, I tell you. And we are, nobody's prepared for that kind of moment. I, tell no. you. I must say, yeah. it sounds quite calm around you now. It's yeah. In the background, it sounds calm. The now. background, yeah, because I've, I've been put in a room, you know, so nobody can bother me. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to that breakthrough in 1985, Mm -hmm. Was there a eureka moment when you suddenly realized how you could uh, improve the, uh, the, the pulse length, uh, shorten the pulse length? It, it came, you know, in different steps. Mm. Yeah. It came in different steps. And in fact, it came very, very kind of naturally with what I was doing. Um, so we wanted to, to amplify very, very short pulses, mm. you know, in order to get more peak power. Mm. Okay, because, you know, power is energy divided by time. And so um, if you want to get a lot of power, peak power, then you, you try to get pulses shorter and shorter and shorter. Okay. Mm. So um, trying to do that, you know, you, so you, when you amplify your pulse, uh, you come to a point where... Um, in, you know, material is breaking down on the laser. Yes. So you have and to reduce the power somehow. Yes. You have to reduce the power, but not change the energy, mm. right? I mm. mean, you have to reduce the power without changing the, the energy, without changing, um, well, your total energy of the pulse, okay? Because you want to do that efficiently. So, uh, I, you know, I just can... Uh, Say well, maybe if we can stretch the pulse, we stretch the pulse, uh, and I, we knew how to do that because we were working on recently on, on very short pulses, and you knew how to stretch pulses by using diffraction gratings and so on. So we stretched the pulse, and of course, immediately the peak power decreased, and and then we could amplify the uh, the pulse much better, much much better, and and then we. We had to compress it back. Uh, so it came, it, it came, you know, by, by steps, you know. Uh, yes. <laughs> so, and what, what, what do you, give me an example of the, one of the most exciting things we can do with these ultra-fast lasers. Well, what we can do is, for instance, accelerate particles. Yeah. We can accelerate particles with uh, uh, really stunning efficiency, so instead of using uh, kilometers you know, to accelerate particles, right, like at CERN or, you know, we could use uh, systems with lasers which will really take only centimeters. Indeed, indeed. Uh, and, you know, accelerators has a lot of applications, you know, in the medical world, okay, yes. because they want, you want to create, for, for example, therapy, okay, Therapy, you like to, to maybe use radioisotopes, you know. Mm. But every time when you want to do that, you have, you know, you have to, uh, sometimes to go outside. Uh, so um, these radioisotopes, for instance, are, are made, you know, at, on, by reactors, which are far away and so on. So it's difficult to bring them back at the patient's bed. Yes. But now, if you really make uh, <clears throat> this accelerator very compact, you can put that, them in hospitals. Yeah. And because they are compact, you know, you can multiply them, you know, and you can have one per hospital or so. Very powerfully described. It's a most lovely example of a, such a successful uh, interaction between basic science and applied science, the whole development. Oh, absolutely. Of absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. And, uh, and, and how, how utterly codependent they are. You cannot mm -hmm. do it without the basic research. Yeah. 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 And it's so exciting that you've been awarded together with your graduate student. <laughs> uh, that too, yes, yes, yes. Well, you know, uh, when I proposed this idea to Donna Strickland, mm. she said, well, that's so simple, you know. But this is not a PhD, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it, 
Well, now it's not a PhD, it's Nobel Prize material. I, I, I don't know of another example where somebody's first published scientific paper is leads eventually to a Nobel Prize. That sets, sets a pretty high standard for other graduate students to achieve. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Will we, be, will we be welcoming you to Stockholm in December? Absolutely. Good. We very well, much look forward know, to it. Thank you very much for speaking to me and congratulations. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.